Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Lillian and I love to talk about books. So in this video I'm going to be doing a best of 2021 and I'll have three main categories where I'll be sharing with you what I thought were the best books I read in 2021. So the first category is going to be books about Singapore. The second category is going to be memoir or fiction written by Asian Americans. And then finally, we'll round things off with a general fiction category. So for each of these, I'll be telling you my top three picks as well as an honorable mention. This is based off of the ratings that I do in each YouTube video. I actually pop them all into an Excel spreadsheet and actually rank ordered everything. So this is from hard data, not just my whims. So I'll also be linking the individual YouTube videos that I did where you can get a more in-depth review if you're interested in checking out some of these books. Okay, so our first category is books about Singapore. And actually all of the books in this category that made the top three in honorable mention were also written by Singaporeans. So starting with our honorable mention, in fourth place or an honorable mention is We Make Spaces Divine by Pooja Nancy. This is a collection of poetry that I really enjoyed. In third place, we have Balik Kampung 2A, People in Places. This is a collection of short stories that are all fiction. And my friend Tim gave this to me for my birthday. I really enjoyed a lot of these short stories. In second place, a really, really good book that I really enjoyed. This is also a collection of short stories, but these are weird. These are a little off kilter, a little bit magical, a little bit surreal. Amanda Lee Co is a really fresh voice, I think, in the Singapore lit scene. Um, so this was our runner up. And then, very nerdy, my top rated Singapore book for last year is actually Liberalism Disavowed, which is more of a political economy textbook or accompanying book for perhaps a class you might take on Singapore. This is by Chua Beng Huat, um, a really, really good thinker, in my opinion, someone I admire a lot. And the key premise of this book is really taking a look at a lot of Singapore's early socialist and social democratic policies and how that kind of uh, interplays with the capitalism that we know in Singapore today. So this was my most highly rated book that was about Singapore. Highly recommend if you know nothing about Singapore or if you live here. Either way, I think you'll learn a lot. Okay, so our next category is fiction by Asian Americans and I actually had to kind of collapse that into fiction slash memoir. Um, the honorable mention in this category that came fourth ranked according to my Google spreadsheet is Crying in H Mart by Michelle Zahner. Um, you can check out my full review of this in the YouTube video linked below. Um, I thought this was really well written and I really resonated with the mixed Asian experience in the US and her descriptions of Korean food, which are bomb. In third place, we have a book that I read on my Kindle. It's called Know My Name by Chanel Miller. This is just an absolute work of art. It's so well written and it captures emotion and uh, pain that I think no other book that I read last year really did. This is a memoir that tells her story of being sexually assaulted on Stanford's campus. And I really just admired Chanel as a person over last year amid a lot of anti-Asian hate. She was able to really use her voice and her art to spread some light and more importantly, really capture emotions and feelings that I think a lot of that community was feeling and able to articulate it in a way that really resonated with the broader community. My runner up is Interior Chinatown, I believe. Yes, Interior Chinatown by Charles Yu. This is fiction. This I really liked for the innovative structure. It's written as a screen treatment and from the point of view as a sidekick, an Asian American sidekick um, throughout film history. And I really liked the ending of this book. Um, I thought it was very clever and really made you think, and it really speaks to contemporary ideas around Asian American identity in the United States. And then our number one is no surprise, Minor Feelings by Kathy Park Hong. This is a tour de force. I definitely need to reread it. These are essays. 
Um, so it's a bit autobiographical, but it's really more like literary criticism or well thought out essays where Kathy is interacting with history, with art, with writers, with um, conceptual ideas. And there is just so much to unpack here. And at the same time, it really captured um, her feelings around a racial movement and a racial feeling in the United States. So I love that this was a combination of art, literature, as well as reflective of these current times that we're in. Okay, and then for my last category, which is just going to be general fiction, I have four recommendations that I would suggest you check out if you're looking for something um, that's plot driven and has good characters and will be engaging. Our honorable mention goes to Piranesi by Susanna Clark, which I read with my book club. Um, that's a book that you don't want to know anything about when you go into it, so do not Google it, do not look up spoilers, just go to it with an open mind and prepare to be blown away. In third place is Homegoing by Yad Yassi, and that took me a while to get around to reading because that's been out for a few years now. I had read Transcendent Kingdom, which is her second book. I read them out of order. Homegoing is also a tour de force, like it is a triumph. Um, it follows two lineages from Africa to present day United States, um, swapping back and forth through from different perspectives and really has a lot of strong and well-developed themes. Second place is Anxious People. I just read this in December, so check out my December books video if you wanna hear more about that. I just thought the story was great and it was so well pieced together and all of the characters were well fleshed out. And as I mentioned in that other video, I listened to it on tape and it really made the characters come alive. And so I just had so much fun listening to that book. And in number one, we have Gold Diggers by Sanjana Satyan. My friend Ginny, my other friend Ginny, I have two great friends named Ginny, gave me this book. Uh, her classmate wrote it and it's her debut novel and it's so impressive. The writing is super lush and she really captures the Indian American experience, but also embeds a really compelling and intriguing supernatural element to the story. Um, it's a bit, of, a bit on the longer side, but I really enjoyed that because I felt that she gave due treatment to her protagonist Neil and all of the shenanigans that he gets up to. Um, it kind of follows his coming of age story. So that is my first place for fiction in general, which I'm actually a little bit surprised by because I wasn't expecting it to be a book from the point of view of a young man, but the numbers do not lie and that's what came out on top. So if you're looking for a novel to read in the new year, I would suggest picking one of those four. Thank you so much if you made it this far. I am always open to your feedback. Let me know if you've read any of these books, if you disagree or agree with my ranking and my very scientific rating system. I'm going to be brainstorming how to make these videos even better this year, definitely on the shorter side and with a lot more content that will be relevant to you and will help you decide what you want to read. Um, but with that, thanks so much for watching and I really appreciate everyone's support of this channel. All of my love to you and happy new year, happy year of the tiger, and I'll see you in the next video. Meet me out in uptown city where the stove said you wanna go downtown, some blushing on the low.